Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Neek, and I'm giving you guys more Nature Boy trial coverage. This morning, basically what happened was Nature Boy decided not to be present because... He does not want to be in the courtroom with somebody who has COVID, even though he was given all types of other options, alternatives, ways to have masks, shields, all kind of things like that. He still decided to be removed from the courtroom. Everybody else decided that they are not phased by COVID or the presence of it being that they're going to be wearing a mask. So the show must go on. Now, this is the third witness of the day. The first two, I'll have to like come back and post those later because I was I was getting myself ready while I was watching their testimony. But um now we have a member of the group whose name is Juju and basically he keeps trying to go on a tangent like he is trying to slip in the information that he wants and not really answering the questions. They kind of have keep pausing. So, we're going to jump right on into his testimony and see what is going on. Okay? Bring you right in. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you present to the court to be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you got? I do. State your name and spell it for the court, please. Juliano Xavier Diaz. J-U-L-I-A-N-O X-A-V-I-E-R Diaz. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Diaz, how, how old are you? 21, sir. Okay. And do you know Elijah your Bishop? Yes, sir. How long have you known him? For about four years. Four years? Yes, so sir. Since you were 17 years old? Yes, sir. Okay. How did you meet him? Well, um, it was a certain phase in my life where I was going through a lot and I was seeking answers. I was seeking answers to the universe. So um, I came across him on the internet. And when I came across his information on the internet, it was a lot of information. It was, but it was also a lot of hate. A lot of negativity from online critics, popular online critics. One of them being Chantel Coleman. Mm -hmm. Chantel Coleman, um, who's actually here today, known as a T. She's one of Mr. Bishop's popular online critics. Okay. Who's actually being. Um, All right, oh, yeah, we're getting. It's not responsive. Just answer the question. <laughs> he came well, in yeah. punching. Oh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> yeah, he needs more information. They had to keep pausing him. I only got like the somewhat into his testimony, then I was done getting, getting ready. ready. It was. Okay. So now we're going to resume. Okay. So I've been through me going through a lot in my life. Okay. And um, I was seeking answers to guidance through the internet. Okay. And so you were trying to add that there was uh, some negativity online. Is that yes, correct? Uh, who was a negative critic you saw online? Well, there's actually a lot of them in Saturday's courtroom today. Well, the main one that has been emailing the detectives to... All right. Stop. All right. Hold on. Stop. Hold on. Stop. Hold on. stop. <laughs> Okay, let me rephrase the question. Um, can, can you guys approach for a sec? Sure, Judge. He like, y'all gonna get this defense up in here. If y'all ain't gonna ask me, I'm gonna hold it down for the God, okay? So, yeah, so I got like, I want to say five five minutes into his testimony. And then I was, like I said, I was done being ready, getting ready. And then so now we're gonna resume the rest. But like while I was watching a little bit of it, trying to get myself together... He was trying to defend his God. The first guy, he did a really good job on his testimony. He just answered clear, concise questions, you know, but this younger individual is very defensive, and he started to know him when he was um, 17. When did you physically meet him? March 29th, 2021. March 29th, 2021. And yes, where, sir. where did you meet him at? Puerto Rico. Okay. And how did you get there? Um, I caught a flight. Okay. Where did you come? Where were you coming from? Chicago. Okay. Were you a student in school, or what were you doing there? Um, well, during that exact time, it was I think COVID was going on, so all the schools were shut down. Okay. All right. And how did you fund the flight from Chicago to Puerto Rico? Well, um, I had a job that was I, I, the job closed down, so so they had to send me a check 
Okay. A two thousand dollar check. Okay. And then I'll just use that check to pay for the flight. Okay. And so when you got to Puerto Rico, what was the living arrangements there? The living the living arrangements were actually very beautiful. Um the men we were just together. We were just together united. Mm-hmm. Um Mr. Bishop, he actually wanted his own space. Mm-hmm. He actually ended up leaving to Atlanta in his own space while we were actually alone, isolated, not isolated, but we were alone and said, holding down the hub by ourselves. We were actually alone. But he just asked you about the living arrangement. So just answer the question, please. Yeah, we, we, yeah, yeah. It was really beautiful. It was really beautiful. Anybody, hold up. If there are any comments, you're going to be kicked out of the courtroom. And Judge, I, I just, I'm, I'm going to try that, but I want him to have the opportunity to explain it. He, he certainly can, but he has to answer the question. If it warrants explanation, that's fine. But I, we're not going to go off on tangents that are not relevant. Right. I think, I think he's determined that it, it does warrant explanation. So, okay. um, you, you, you met Mr. Bishop, left, and went back to Atlanta. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, we were at the house. Okay. And how long were you in Puerto Rico for? Several times. How long were you in Puerto Rico for? Um, for about six months. Okay. Do you? How many people were there with you? About um, probably like third. It was probably um seven men. Seven men. Okay. Yes. Were there any women there? Um, the ones that um had wives, the men that had wives, they were there too. Okay. Also, Mr. Bishop's wives were also there. Okay. So there were women there as well. Yes, yes. Okay. But um, he, except for his main wives, they went to Atlanta with him. Okay. Do you know who his main wives that went to Atlanta with him were? Um, the main wives will be Malia um, and Efru okay. and Aya that were with him. Okay. The rest of the women stayed there? Yes. Okay. All right. And they stayed there because they were not a main wife uh, or they were in a relationship with another guy? Well... The thing about the whole the whole tribe is we're spiritualists, we're spiritual teachers, we're spiritual gurus, so we teach spirituality. So people come and join on a spiritual journey. Nobody is being recruited, nobody's being persuaded to join okay. like for instance first. Non responsive. Sustain sustain okay. the objection. Okay. So um, let me re re ask the question. Um, Three women went to Atlanta with him. Does that sound right? Same time. Three, his wives went to Atlanta with him? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, now, you were asked, you were mentioning that you don't recruit and things like that. People were just showing up? Yes. Okay. All right. So, after you were in Puerto Rico for six months, where did you go after that? After Puerto Rico, we went to Atlanta. Atlanta? Okay. Yes, sir. And so, from the time that you got to Atlanta, did you remain in Atlanta or did you go somewhere else? Um, after Atlanta, uh, after Atlanta, we went to Philadelphia. Okay. And when you say we, who was we? Um, the men. We went to Philadelphia to network. Um, I did a few music, uh, music, music shows. Okay. Uh, really to network. Okay. All right. And you, you did some music shows. What kind of music did you do? Um, it was a music video I did on, on YouTube for music. I did a video. It was a open mic, like okay. some type of open mic night. Okay. And was Carbonation, was, were there music production happening within Carbonation as well? Say one time. Within the group, was there, was there music production being happening as well? Yes, there was a lot of production. Okay. All right. Um, were there albums that were created and produced? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, were they placed on Spotify and other places? On, on all streaming platforms. Okay. All streaming platforms? YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, really everywhere. Okay. All right. So, during the time that you were in uh, March 20th, 2021, did you know Bill? No, sir. Okay. Did you know Bill? No, sir. All right. And did you know her? Yes, sir. You knew Yes, sir. Okay. Do you remember what name you went by? Yes, sir. Okay. And did you know Yes, sir. Okay. Do you know what name she went by? Okay. During the time that you were there, um, how often would you see uh, Mr. Carter? Um, well, she was actually Aaron Dixon's wife. Okay. She was in their Aaron Dixon's wife, so it was it was quite often I was seeing her. Okay. Aaron Dixon was another member of the group. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, 
So when she was around, was she staying around Aaron Dixon? For the most part, yes, sir. Okay. And how often did you see her? Well, when she had got to Puerto Rico, she had came to Puerto Rico, and she wasn't there for long. She had, she ended up wanting to leave again. Okay. So when she left, she ended up going back to um, Atlanta. Okay. So I didn't really see her. I seen her more when we was in Atlanta. Atlanta. Okay. Yeah. Okay. In March of 2022, were you at the house in Atlanta? Yes, sir. March 24th to be exact? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, what was the living arrangements in that house? How did people stay? How did they sleep? Well, we ended up like, um, we ended up dividing ourselves into the living room, the um, dining room. Um, Mr. Bishop had his headquarters. It was also um, two other rooms that were open and available. Okay. Um, the middle room was it turned it ended up being turned into like a studio slash production room. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And a typical day, how much production was done on a typical day? It was a lot of production. It was a lot of production. Like um, it was music being done. It was um, videos being edited. Um, it was a lot of acting that was being done. A lot of it was a lot of production. Okay, and the acting would entail, um, was it dramatic acting, comedy, what kind of acting? It was really all type of acting, it was, like, it was really all for entertainment purposes. Okay. We decided that um, right now humanity is in a very special time right now, and it, we come with a very important message that, we, that needs to be delivered to humanity. So us realizing that humanity is being distracted through entertainment and drama, we chose to meet humanity where they are and give them drama and entertainment. Okay. So collectively, I was actually there when we came to the collective agreement to do this, okay. to, to do certain performances and say certain things to deliver the message within that performance. Okay. Spiritual improv is what we consider. And was, that, was the purpose of that to get people to some shock and awe so they would pay attention to what you were saying? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, so uh, March 24th, 2022, uh, was there anything, um, was there a party going on in the house or anybody over that day that you can recall? Um, I think we were having an interview, a Sonetter interview. I, I'm not sure, but um, the most that I can remember that day is cleaning up. We were cleaning up. I was cleaning up. I was still cleaning up the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up, we ended up feeling the energy inside of the house as if it was a meeting going on. So as I dis as we dismissed the kitchen, that's when we attended the meeting, and then the conclusion was already we already came to a conclusion that she was ready to depart from the group. Okay, so Miss, when you say she was there, yes, sir. Okay, um, in the in the meeting, uh, what happened after the meeting? How did you know she was getting ready to leave the group? Well, uh, it was it was it was discussed, and it was said that she was ready to leave and uh, to make arrangements for her Uber to pull up. So after that was discussed, I was asked to get her belongings from the set and then put it back. Okay. So I went to the back and I got her belongings, I got her paintings, I got her suitcases, and I organized them. I helped organize them right there by the doors so she could leave. Okay. Uh, where That's was what the she last guy said. What was this? Um, I, 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 I didn't really see her. Okay. I think she was right. I think I, she was in the living room. Yeah, okay. she was in the living room. That's not fact. She was standing right there. Okay. And where was Mr. Bishop? Did you see him? Um, I did not see him. Okay. So when you came back in, were her bags, did you give them to her or you put them by the door? Um, we placed, she was standing right there by the door, so I remember coming in, placing them right there by the door, and she had certain paintings that I actually liked. Like, a, she had a feral painting, and I, I remember asking her about the feral painting, and she said she wants to keep it. Okay. So I'm okay, so I remember placing them right there by the door. Okay. You wanted to keep the feral painting for yourself? Yes, I liked it. Okay. Yeah. But she didn't let you? Yeah, she was like, oh, uh, she wanted it, so I'm okay. Okay. That's right. All right, so after you did that, did you continue to stay there with her, or what did you do next? Um, after I helped organize her bags, I just went about my business and waited until she, lit, until she left. And okay. once the Uber pulled up and she walked out the house, I thought that's when I went about my day. She just no longer existed from my point of view. Like, okay, now she's going into the world, she's leaving. Okay. That's what it was. Did you see her come back in the house? I did not see her come back in the house, but I know she did. And when she came back in, she it, it was out. Hold on. Well, he, he can oh. you can you state how you knew she how did? Does he know? Yeah. Because because 
the Uber, when she had walked out to the Uber, she had ended up turning around. And then I was told that she came back. No, you can't talk about you, what someone else told you. Okay. You can't base your knowledge well, she on she turned around. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You cannot talk about what someone else told you. You can talk about what you saw okay. and what you observed, but that's it. Okay. So what I observed is I observed that the Uber was no longer there. Okay. And her bags were still outside. Okay. So I went outside and grabbed her bags because we're not going to leave them out there. And she has a history of coming and leaving and coming and leaving okay. several times throughout the years. Okay. All right. And so you brought her bags back inside? Yes, sir. But you didn't see her yourself? No, sir. Okay. You didn't see her go back upstairs or anything like that? No, sir. Okay. Um, and so what did you do with her bags? We just organized them right there. I left them right there. When we brought them back inside, we left them right there by the um, staircase. Okay. Because I didn't know she was going to leave again because she has a history of leaving and coming back, like I said before. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> had you ever witnessed any acts of violence between Mr. Bishop uh, and women in the group? No, sir. Have you ever seen him punch or hit or kick somebody? No, sir. Uh, how about uh, surround them and body slam them or anything like that? No, sir. Had you ever seen uh, him commit any physical acts of violence against... Uh, no, sir. Had you ever seen her with any uh, bruises or anything like that that Mr. Bishop would have uh, placed on her? No, sir. Um, what about women? Did, did you see or hear Mr. Bishop direct women uh, to hit other women on his behalf? Not that I've seen, sir. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> during the time that uh, March 24, 2022, were there... Um, there was a mixture of men and women standing there? Yes, sir. Okay. But you were for sure there that day? Yes, sir. Okay. And did you hear any um, scuffling upstairs or any fighting or anything that sounded like violence upstairs in the house? No, sir. It was actually very, like, it was peaceful. The music, you know, we went back to cleaning. As we went back to cleaning, it was just a peaceful night. Everybody went about their business about their day. Okay. And this is why I feel as if Mr. Bishop. All right, no, 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 no. <laughs> Your feelings are irrelevant. This is why. I, this is why I know. Stop. That. Hold on. Stop. <laughs> you can't convert it to I know and I feel. The judge is not going to allow you to say that. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay. Oh my God. March twenty fourth, two thousand twenty two. April 7, 2022, were you interviewed by police? No, I was not asked no questions. And I was asked no questions. Okay. Did police come and search the house? They did. Okay. Who else was there during the search of the house that you can recall? Was it a lot of people? As far as the police? No, not the police. What? Who was staying in the house when they came to search the house? Do you remember? Um, it was probably about, what was it like? Can y'all imagine how Malia gonna be when she get on the stand? Around that, around that range. Okay. All right. Do you know who the police questioned there? No. Okay. But they did question you. No, I was not questioned. Okay. And this is why I have reasons. No, 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 I'm gonna end this if he keeps doing, if he keeps this up. You you have to answer the question. <laughs> oh my yeah. God. Okay, so there were twelve to fifteen people there. Were the devices that were there? Um, were they devices that were um, used for production, the phones and cameras and things like that? Yes, sir. We okay. actually had cameras set around the house. We were all, we were working on a documentary. Okay. For production purposes, so there was cameras set up. Okay. Still be we playing. Okay. All right. Want to run back over something? Then we'll sit down. You said you uh, first came across him. You're 21 now. You were 17 when you first came across him, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And you were living in Chicago? Yes, sir. Okay. You were, what What year were you in high school? Had you dropped out of high school or were you in high school? Um, Currently during that time period, I was not in high school. I was in alternative school. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started tapping into the realization that, okay, nature, nature. Okay. And were your parents in Chicago? Yes, sir. Okay. Did you continue to communicate with your parents? Yes, sir. Okay. Did your parents know where you were? They actually did. Okay. Uh, how frequently do you think you talked to your parents during that time frame? Um, when I was in Puerto Rico? Or yes, sir. 
Well, when I was in Puerto Rico, I was actually FaceTiming my parents. I was face, I would FaceTime them to show them that everything's okay. I'm here. I'm protected. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And where 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 is the group? Uh, did most people have cell phones in Puerto Rico? Yeah, I'm pretty sure everybody has cell phone. Okay. Were they allowed to use them? Of course. Okay. And do you recall if any other parents came to Puerto Rico or any other family members while you were there? Puerto Rico. If you can recall. No, not that I can not that I can recall while I was there. Okay. And during the time that you were in Atlanta, in Atlanta did did everybody have cell phones? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, and were people allowed to use them? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. The state's gonna have a few questions for you, okay? Yes, sir. And just remember to be responsible to what they're asking you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Across. <laughs> All right, Mr. Diaz, just a few questions for you. Um, you just said that your family knew where you were. So was I. You just testified that when you were with Mr. Bishop, your family knew where you were. Yes, ma'am. That's not true, is it? It is true. Okay, there was an occasion when the police came to the house because you had not contacted your mom in several months and she was concerned about you, right? The police had popped up, but they popped up because it's a lot of online hate. Okay. It's a lot of online critics online that make us look bad. So her being a mother, caring, of course, when she sees these online critics making us look bad, she's gonna be in worry of her son. So why she so didn't she call you? She reported that to the police. It's a lot of videos that's making us look bad, so she's worried. But I told her where we were, okay. I told her where I was. Here's my question. She was concerned because you had not contacted her in four months. Yes? That's not true though, okay. because I was in contact with her. I right. actually called her and FaceTimed her. Okay, and you just testified on direct that you had never seen Mr. Bishop be violent with anyone in the group. That's fact. And that's not true, is it? That is true. There's a video where Mr. Bishop is there with you and Loyal, right? Loyal. Right. And he slaps Loyal in the face. And you were present on that video, weren't you? I was present on that video, but I have already stated on the record that a lot of things that we had did were for production purposes. It was called spiritual improv. Like I said, we have come with a very important message. Okay, so I want to pause his testimony real quick. This video was not played in court, but for those of you guys who don't know what they're talking about, they're talking about this video with Loyal. Now, Loyal is now deceased. Rest in peace to Loyal. He seemed like after he left the group, he fell apart. And his life went on a very, very, very dark path where he ended up... Um, in a situation where he his life was taken from him in a very brutal way. So um, this is the very moment where there's telling the jury about him that's on the stand being present at the time that he slaps loyal. So we're going to watch this video and then we're going to resume the testimony. Again, this was not played in court, but for my audience, I'm just going to refresh your memory if you guys don't know what they're talking about. Bring it to my motherfucking mouth. Hmm. Get in the scene, ho. Mm hmm. I show you in the scene, bitch. Did I ask for a strawberry? Bitch, did I ask for a strawberry? No. Huh? No, my chief. Don't you ever in your motherfucking life give me no motherfucking strawberry unless I ask for one, motherfucker. Pushing three. I make you get on your knees if we're not seen. See, they ain't used to a pimp. Oh, these niggas. I don't understand. Yeah, I don't understand. Okay, so that's the video. Rest in peace to Loyal. That was like a very infamous video because. I mean, you know, I would be talking on the phone and people would just randomly, one of my homeboys, he would just randomly be like, did you, did it, don't you ever in your life pass me no strawberry? Like, it was like a big deal at the time. So, um, let's resume back again. Rest in peace to Loyal. Sad and tragic situation that happened to him. Um, very unfortunate, but that video was very, 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 I don't know if I want to say iconic because obviously he's a destructive vile guy but like it was polarizing there there we go is that a better word anyways back back, back to the testimony that you had never seen mr bishop be violent with anyone in the group that's fact and that's not true is it 
That is true. There's a video where Mr. Bishop is there with you and Loyal, right? Loyal. Right. And he slaps Loyal in the face. And you were present on that video, weren't you? I was present on that video, but I have already stated on the record that a lot of things that we had there were for production purposes. It was called spiritual improv. Like I said, we have come with a very important message to proclaim the kingdom. Okay, all right, you're getting far off the, resp the response now. Yeah, so, 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 hold on, hold on. I would ask that he be allowed to answer the question. He, she she asked him a question, he should be allowed And to he, is, he has a right to explain his answer, but he doesn't have a, a right to go on and on and on about things that are not relevant. But I, I would argue that it is relevant. He's explaining okay. why the, the, the slap that she's alleging that was violent, he should be able to explain okay. why that happened. All right, overrule the objection. Okay, Mr. Diaz, here's my question. Mm -hmm. All right, on direct, you said you have never seen Mr. Bishop be violent with anyone in the group, right? Right. That is a lie. That is just not true, is it? That is true. Okay, you've seen him be violent with people in the group, right? For production, it's not, it wasn't violence, it was out of a joke. But it I was there. I was there collectively when we came to the agreement, we came to the collective agreement. We were actually in the living room watching the TV so called Living Colors with Jimmy with Jim Carrey and Jimmy Fox. We were in the living room collectively. I was there that night. And we came to the collective agreement that we need to do certain things and say certain things, performances, to slip in the message to humanity. Give humanity entertainment, give humanity drama and meet them where they are so we can slip the message, the divine message that we have for them inside that performance. So any physical activity that is being presented online, we have already stated, and we it's actually a live video on the internet where the telephone will be passed around. Like for me, instance, and for me, instance, the phone will come to me, and I'll be like, "Hi, my judge, I'm going to get an response." A judge, he, she's asked a question. He should he have a right to explain. And he does, but he doesn't have a right to go on and on and on indefinitely and about information that isn't responsive to the question. Well, he's given an example, but she's okay. accused of well, lying. And of, of, of being involved in violence, and he's given an example. All right, of over, how it wasn't. overrule the objection. He's had ample opportunity. I, to, I didn't make an objection, Judge. I'm, you, I'm, I'm asking. I'm overruling you. Whatever it is you're saying. <laughs> Sorry. I <laughs> know. Uh, you. They objected. The next part he you said or was about to say was relevant, though. Uh, sustaining. I'm overruling. I don't believe there was an objection. Y'all have gotten me so confused now. Well, I just asked that you find the answer is non-responsive. Non-responsive, thank you. All right, Mr. Diaz, I'm, I'm going to ask a really, really specific question. It's a yes or no question, all right? He does have a right to explain his answer, but you need to answer the question okay. first. There is a video on YouTube with you, Mr. Bishop, and Loyal. Yes? Yes. In that video, you are all three facing the camera. Yes? Yes. In that video, Mr. Bishop slaps Loyal in the face. Yes? I don't know. Okay. All right. It's called spiritual improv. Wonderful. All right. So you joined when you were 17 years old. Pretty young. Right. And you said that you were going through some things. Yes. And so you looked at Mr. Bishop as God. Yes. You still think he's God. Yes, but I also know that I am God too, and you are God too, and everybody in this courtroom is God. God is energy. Molecules. When we observe reality, if I was to take a microscope and zoom into the essence of who you truly are, it's just a whole bunch of energy vibrating. So I understand that Mr. Bishop is God, and I am God, and you are God, and everything is God, and we are all God. Okay. Ciao. And uh, with Mr. Bishop, you, you look to him for your spiritual guidance. Yes. And y'all talk pretty regularly. Since when? Since this case has been going on, you guys still talk, right? Um, it's kind of not as much as we used to because it's been a lot of, not, not, not as much. Okay. Um, but you have talked to him since this trial started, right? Since the trial started, not really. Not really. Not, yes or no? Have you talked to him since the trial started last week? Since the trial started last week? Um, yes. Okay. And he kind of gives you an update about what's going on in court, right? Not really. It's just the more so it's like, Mr. Bishop, I look to Mr. Bishop as a mentor, as a tutor, as my tutor, as a teacher. So since we're going through a, it's trials and tribulations that we are going through right now. So as like a disciplinary and a father figure, that's, that's how I look like a father figure. He 
keeps his students make sure that he motivates his students he inspires the students he inspires them he motivates them to keep going to stay strong and when he motivates you he motivates you to come in here and, and tell him what he said right no he just motivates me to speak the truth okay now uh let's talk about when you joined the group there were some rules right yes now you said you had a two thousand dollar check you got from your job uh, and that helped fund your fare to puerto rico yes ma'am and then the rest of that money you gave it to mr bishop when you got here Yes, ma'am. It was just in the pot. I just gave it to the pot. I, it was a donation from my heart. Okay. Uh, did you have any belongings that you had to sell before you got here or to the group? Did I what? Did you have any belongings that you had to sell before you got to the group? Oh, um, no. Um, and any credit cards or anything like that? No, I have no credit cards. And as far as sleeping, if Mr. Bishop was up talking and teaching or having your meetings, y'all couldn't go to sleep until he said y'all could, right? I mean, it's not that we couldn't go to sleep till he said that we could. It's just if we're in a classroom and the teacher is teaching, it's like, why would you want to miss out on a lesson that the teacher is teaching? Why why, why would you be here? Why are you here if you're going to miss out on a lesson? If we're in school and you're in class and the teacher is teaching and you fall asleep during class, is the teacher going to say, go on, pay attention to the message? Okay. And as far as eating, y'all couldn't eat until he ate. Um, that's not really true because I've, I've witnessed multiple times uh, Mr. Bishop not eat. He's actually I've witnessed multiple times Mr. Bishop fast for seven days while the rest of the members inside of the tribe eat as much as they want to eat. So that really isn't true. Okay. Um, when y'all were out in Puerto Rico or wherever you guys were, um, y'all couldn't use the bathroom inside, could you? That's not true because we actually had an inside bathroom that was connected to a septic tank. Okay. There so was not that. Go ahead, so it's not that we couldn't use the bathroom inside, it's just we understand what the earth is and we care for the earth and we understand that when you flush that toilet, it goes through a plumbing system to harm the waters of the earth, which is causing the earth to be harmed and destroyed and that's when natural disasters occur. So us being naturalists and spiritual gurus, we like to live in tune with the earth and protect the earth. And, and a part of being in tune with the earth <clears throat> was pooping in a hole outside, right? It's, uh, it's, it's, I know it sounds crazy, it sounds crazy, but poop is not what you think it is. It's not what you think it is. It's actually soil. When you eat tox a lot of toxins, you fill your body with these toxins and these parasites. And then Can you imagine how it's smelling out there? Sick. But it's actually so soil and dirt that's supposed to be given back to the earth. Okay. But when you when we were inside the bathroom, it was connected to a septic tank. So if you flush the toilet, it's going to get pushed through a separate tank and get into the earth. So we were never not allowed to use the restroom inside. Okay. And so when you, you released your soil into a hole in the ground, you were allotted six squares of toilet paper, right? Hmm? Six squares of toilet paper. That's what y'all got to use when you had to use the bathroom, right? No. No. Okay. I don't know where you got that from. All right. So Mr. Bishop, um, he defined the roles between the men and the women, right? Define the rules as far as what? Women being less than men. Women being less than men. It's not that woman. Mr. Bishop never said that. Mr. Bishop actually said that women were actually equal in value. We were all not equal in function. And you can clearly see that when you look at how our bodies are structured. We are all equal. We are all one. We just have different purposes. We have different genomes. We have different activated genes that make us who we are, that make us different from each other. All right, and he told you all that if you left the cult, that outside would be hell. He never, no, not really. It's um, it's not a cult. It's not a cult. It's a tribe. For instance, me, I joined the, I joined the tribe on my own free will, on my own accord. I'm the one that tested Mr. Bishop, saying that I like what he's doing. It makes a lot of sense. I can feel that. I see the movement, and I want to join and be a part of the movement. You know what I'm So me doing that, um, what was the primary question? Yeah. <laughs> the question was, he told you that when people left the group, that outside was hell. Oh, no, 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 no. Actually, this whole realm, hell is a mentality, it's a state of mind. So when you are at discontent with who you are, when you are miserable within yourself, when you are depressed within yourself, this is when you are in hell. It's all a state of mind. It's all mental. It's the first direct law of principle. The law of mentalism. 
So hell was like a more in a state of mind. You could just because you're with them don't mean that you can actually be in a heavenly state. You could still you could be anywhere you want to be and be in a state of hell because you're depressed within yourself because you are going through a lot of situations that you don't have proper answers to. So it's not that when you leave you're going to hell. It's just that with us we hold a very healthy perspective. So you trying to turn your back and denounce us and join the online critics as you leave them into your lower self because now you're going against what we stand on, which is truth, morals, and principles. Okay, just a couple more questions. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about social media. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Bishop, back in March 2022, had a Twitter page. Yes? Yes. And nothing got posted to that Twitter page without his permission. Um, I'm not really sure about how he ran social media. I wasn't really running the social media. I was more so doing like the editing videos, working on the studio. So I'm not really sure of how he ran the social media. And and you talked about Mr. Bishop being your God, your Lord, your Savior, all that, right? The Messiah, yes. The Messiah. The is the Messiah. The Messiah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you can't say no to the Messiah, can you? Um, it's not that you can't say no. Mr. Bishop never said he. Mr. Bishop puts everybody to be real and be themselves. That's actually one of the MODs, which is morals of desires. What was the principle that he teaches? Transparency, which is you being your authentic self. How sad. You. So whenever somebody was holding back, he will feel it. Whenever, like, he will push people to speak their truth and be real. So he never said, don't say no. He never said that. And if someone said no, there would be consequences, right? Not really. If someone said no, it would just be like, okay, elaborate on, what's, elaborate on why you're saying no. That's all. Put your ideas out there. All right. Redirect. I have no further questions. Thank you. May he be excused. Let him off the stand. He may. Also, Mr. Bishop, no, Mr. Bishop, 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 uh, we're going to continue on. I would like to get as much evidence right, as possible. Two more witnesses, Judge. Okay. Uh, four shade away from the river. Okay. They know not to put Malia on there because, baby, she gonna be she would be worse than that. So he said two more witnesses. So he did not name uh, Malia's name, child, because he already know. <laughs> oh my God. I knew, I knew, I knew it was not going to be a good idea. I was surprised at how good Jax did, but, um, <laughs> oh my God. That's what you call standing on business. <laughs> he was standing on business. Okay. Child, let's see what Aya got to say. Here come Aya. Pull up to the microphone now. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you present to the court to be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you out? I do. State your name and spell it for the court, please. For Shay Wade, P O R C H A E, last name Wade, W A. I'm sure they're going to bring up how she left her Thank son to come to the group. Uh, Ms. Wade, how old are you? Um, um, Hold on. Before Ms. Wade answers, she has no papers. Yeah, she can't. Okay, you're, you're, you won't be able to use notes, Ms. Wade. You'll have um, to turn those Can you grab them from her, please? Sure, Judge. I cannot use my notes? No, ma'am. Why not? Ma'am. The law. You can't use notes. What? Ma'am. Okay, take your. You got to lay out the papers. All right, very good. All right, I have a paper, Judge. Okay, thank you. All right, Ms. Wade, how are you? Okay, before I start, I no, 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 before you start, we answer the <laughs> questions. I do want no. to put on the record that I did oh, file the no. complaint okay. with Judge Tiger. Okay. No, 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 come no. On. Judge, if, if we get on, because you're oh. not listening. You're not listening. Are you going to listen? Oh, are my gonna, God. Gonna, this is not looking good for him. Like, why would y'all be doing this? I answer the question. 
Okay, so as you can see, Aya is slated next to come up, and I've already watched her testimony. However, I think that it's really important to get to you guys Juju's testimony. Now, as you've seen in his testimony, he was very defensive. He wanted to make sure that he stood up for Mr. Bishop, and he wanted to make sure that he told the jury what he needed to tell them because he feels like he's unfairly prosecuted. Now, as it pertains to Aya's testimony, that was like the most disruption that she did in the courtroom. So I'm going to put a delay on hers because it was more calm. It was more like, you know, she answered the questions. She pulled herself together. And even though some of her questions, her answers may not have been truthful, she was poised and, you know, she kind of like reeled it in. That was like the most action that you got from her. So therefore, those two actionable pieces, I'm going to put them up now. And then I'm going to go back to watching the stream, recording, watching, editing, watching, posting, watching, posting. And I'm going to continue to stay according to the order. Now, as it pertains to Juju and how I feel about him and his testimony specifically the younger you are the more influenced you are the more impressionable you are and I believe that that just showed how deep his grip is on the people that go to him when they are younger so I'm I'm thinking that um that testimony right there is really going to paint the picture for the jury as far as the influence that he has especially the younger you are when you join and it's crazy. Now, before he got to testify, it was Jax who testified. I think that Jax did a very, very good job. I was actually surprised that he did so well talking. And I'm going to get his testimony up to you guys later. But I was really surprised at how well he was talking because normally when he talks, he'd be sounding slow. You know, like he'd be sounding like real slow. But on the stand, he sounded like he got some sense, like he could understand and articulate himself. And I'm like, why you be acting so slow any other time? That's weird. But anyways, I digress. So I feel like this is important. So I'm pausing the stream, editing this real quick, going to get it to you guys. The rest of the videos, I am going to wait to edit them later um, because, again, I am going to follow the rules, okay, and do it how I was instructed until I am instructed otherwise, okay, period. So let's see what y'all got to say about this. What do you think? What do you think this is going to do for his case? What do you think this will do as far as um, the idea of mind control as far as what they're what they're saying for the jury? Y'all let me know what y'all think and I'll see y'all next time.